Hey, 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 Mr. Manly here with lesson number 453 in How to Be Manly. I spent my New Year's Eve with friends waiting for that stroke of midnight. We had a good time, but one by one they were telling me of their New Year's resolutions. This one's going to join a gym. Another's going to lose weight. Someone's going to stop smoking. Personally, I've never believed in resolutions. But hey, Happy New Year. I opened up my new year with some shopping, and in the aisle was Tanya Harden, the girl voted most popular in my class. Looking back, she reminds me of the Bruce Springsteen song, Glory Days, because back in school, she could turn all the boys' heads. In her senior year, she tackled all the boys on the football team. She did it off the field, so no flags were thrown, yet many whistles were blown. She approached me and asked, didn't we go to high school together? In a shy way, I said, yeah. She said, I always liked you. Why don't we get together tonight? I said, sure, knowing I'll be into something good. We went out and had a good time. She agreed to come back to my place for a nightcap. Knowing now I had a sure thing, I put my arm around her. And she said, wait, we can be friends, but I'm abstaining from physical activity, as it was my New Year's resolution. I was grateful that I saw you today because you're my first test, and you have to hit bottom before you can recover. Not believing in resolutions, I decided to put Tanya back on her own playing field and do so in a manly manner. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, follow along in your manly manual, page number 453, and repeat after me. Number one, test. That makes you the pupil and me the teacher. Look at this A-plus I have for you right here. Number two, now that you've hit bottom, allow me to give you a lift. Number three. Hey, hey, Tanya, come under my covers. Let's see what we can recover. Shortly after, as Tanya grabs you by your A+, plus, that suddenly will no longer lift, and you have to go to the hospital to recover, while she shouts, I aced this test, you'll realize just what kind of man you really are. Until next time, this is Mr. Manley, saying be manly, and good day. You're back at work for the first time in 2024. Good morning. I'm Rock 107's Prospector. January 22nd, Tuesday. First Tuesday of 2024. A brand new year. Just getting started. All that promise. All the possibilities. And I like to do this every year this time. Uh, let's take a look at some of the New Year's resolutions of Northeast PA's Rich and Famous. Scott Schaefer resolves to be far less sarcastic when talking about callers on Talkback 16. WBRE WYOU resolves to keep reminding us that many of their reporters grew up here and that in and of itself makes them somehow better at reporting the news than someone who moved here. New Year's resolutions of Northeast PA's rich and famous. Wilkes-Barre Mayor George C. Brown resolves to rebuild the canopy downtown so that he no longer has to carry an umbrella when he goes to get lunch at Mimo's Pizza. Former WNEP weatherman John Hickey will take some time off in 2024 to tame that fear. New Year's resolutions of the Northeast PA, rich and famous. One-time casino owner and junkyard owner Louis Denabel will finally get rid of the smell at the dump in Dunmore by resolving to no longer eat broccoli and cheese egg sandwiches. And the last one comes from me, Mr. Anger, Rock 107's Prospector. I resolve to help heal this great nation in 2024. The news that's already broken. It's time for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. New York City dropped the crystal ball on New Year's Eve. Plains dropped a brick. Wilkes-Barre Township dropped a blueberry. And the Philadelphia Eagles dropped the ball against the Cardinals. Many people are hitting the gym as 2024 starts. I decided my New Year's resolution would be to procrastinate more. I figured, hey, why rush into failure when I can put it off until next year? And the year after. And the year after. You get the idea. The third annual Back Mountain Trail 5K Sunday was the biggest ever with 800 participants. I thought about joining, then I remembered my idea of a 5K is the distance between my couch and the fridge. Prospector ruins everything, even the news. Tune in tomorrow for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. Well, this guy is really a jerk. Please help him learn from his mistakes. It's time for Am I a Jerk? on Rock 107. All right, am I a jerk? Doing some shopping over the Christmas holiday, reach into a cooler, grab a box of Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches, and just then an Instacart shopper says, I'm sorry, sir, that's been ordered. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I'm just going to grab that. Like, she's calling dibs on what's in my hand. 
So we went back and forth a little with me saying, look, I'm shopping too. I grabbed the last one. She says, it's been ordered and I need it. To which I asked, what if you got here and the cooler was empty and you didn't see me? She said, I'd mark it as out of stock. I'm like, there you go. It's out of stock. She's like, I already put it in my cart and the handheld, it's clicked. Well, that might be true, but it's in my cart. That's when she told me, you don't have to be a jerk about it. So I'm asking you, am I a jerk? What do you think? Out of the rock lines, Karen, am I a jerk? Good morning, Prospector. Good morning. How are you? Good. Um, no, you are not a jerk. You were there first. Like the old singing goes, first come, first serve. So you're okay with me saying, hey, look, I already had it. It's in my cart. I don't care that it's ordered, right? Absolutely. There you go. I'm with her on that, and she's with me. Mike says, kind of, it's the holiday season. Have some compassion. Uh, Corey, no, you're not a jerk. First come, first serve. Uh, checking in with Open Mike from Nanticoke. Am I a jerk? It's Anne from Nanticoke. You're not a jerk. No way. Where does that entitled little b- get off? You're fine, prospector. Jeff from Waymart checking in on the rock lines. What do you think, buddy? Am I a jerk? Hey, you're not a jerk. The people that are so lazy they can't get off their ass and go to the store, they're the jerks. Well, I mean, I see what you're saying, but some people are, you know, maybe kept because they have injuries and sickness and things like that, so they need someone to shop for them. Yeah, well, I still think you're not a jerk. And I appreciate that. I really, really do. Uh, Christine says, no, she shouldn't have clicked in the cart if it wasn't in the cart. Sean, hell no. Don't click till you have it. And Mary Ann, uh, Mary Lynn, rather, says, no, you're not a jerk. Sounds like she's from the entitled generation. Jeff from Dallas checking in on the rock lines. Am I a jerk? Hey, no way, Prospector. First come, first serve. You snooze, you lose. That's what I thought. And she's like, oh, no, it's mine. I ordered it. I'm like, I don't understand how this works. (laughs) It's in my hand. All yours. In the uh, question today of am I a jerk for telling the Instacart shopper, look, it's in my cart. You don't get it. It's mine. When she said, oh, that's ordered, sir, so I've already had it in my hand. According to you, Northeast PA, overwhelmingly, no, I am not a jerk. Now, there's plenty of bad news, but it's not all bad. It's time for the brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. Officers from the New York Police Department's 5th Precinct took swift action when a six-story apartment building across from their station caught fire. Responding to reports of trapped elderly residents, officers entered the building. Body cam footage shows them carrying a 99-year-old woman out in safety. In total, the officers successfully rescued the 99-year-old woman, two men aged 96 and 91, and another woman, all just days before Christmas. Thanks. We needed that. The brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. It's time to uncover the most outrageous and idiotic content of the digital realm. We're about to embark on a journey of unintentional hilarity. Online handles have been changed to protect the stupid. It's X stupidity on Rock 107. Bad at Naps writes, I'm not an American, I'm an Arizonian. Won't work at the patent office asks, when will someone invent socks for our hands? My hands are always cold. It's X stupidity on Rock 107. Ungood at Biology asks, how long would a pregnancy take if she had twins? Need help with math and science answers, 9 plus 9 equals 19 months. Just doesn't get it asks, why do the women never have to take a DNA test to see if it's their child? It's X stupidity on Rock 107. English as a first language writes, girl, everything you said is ear elephant. No need for a dictionary rights. Can't stand all these bird leaves around my car. Damn that nest. Here to help answers, bird leaves? You mean feathers? It's X stupidity on Rock 107. It's time to have a little fun on the phones. Good morning. I'm Rock 107's Prospector. And today we're going to be calling a doctor's office, telling them we're bringing my daughter in for shots. But I have a special request to let my daughter know that I'm protecting her and that I got her back. It's another Prospector prank call on Rock 107. Dr. Ed, this office. Yeah, hi, this is Rick. Um, I'm coming in this afternoon at 3 o'clock with my wife. Our, our daughter's getting shots today. Okay. Okay, I have an unusual request, you know. Uh, last time she got a shot, she was looking right at me, and it just, like, broke my heart. Yeah, I totally understand that. Right, so here's what I was thinking. Uh, and I understand this is an odd request, but is it the same nurse giving the shots? Because last time around, it was a man that came in. Um, let me double check. You said your appointment was at 3? Yeah, 3 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a male nurse. Okay, okay, well, 
Absolutely. Actually, that helps me out because what I'd like to do is when he gives you the shots, and we'll let him know ahead of time, uh, I'd like to be able to just kind of grab him and kind of rough him up a little bit and like hustle him out the door and be like, you can't do that to my daughter and kind of like forcefully shove him out of the room and then slam the door so that she could see I'm protecting her and I wouldn't just stand by if somebody tried to hurt her because I think that's important. Um, I, I don't think that that would be a good idea. The physical contact aspect of it may make things worse for her. How does that make things worse? Because now she realizes, like, hey, when someone hurts me, dad's going to protect me. Because yeah, I can see that look on her face. Time, we don't want the children to grow up being afraid of the doctor's office. We want the parents to be there. Well, hello, to be there sticking, to, a, needle, to, to sticking a needle in them is going to make them more afraid, don't you think? Well, absolutely, I understand that. But it also is a temporary thing for something that's well, going so to is getting mu- long run. Getting mugged is temporary, but it's still scary. Yeah, but getting mugged, just the act of getting mugged, it could provide a source of trauma for the child that was even worse. So does having a needle stuck in your leg if dad's standing there. If dad's standing there and there's a needle stuck in your leg, don't you think they'd be like, hey, dad's not protecting me when a strange man comes out to me? You want your daughter to constantly be afraid of the doctor because the nurse wouldn't be seen as a strange person. It would be seen as a nurse at a doctor's office. So that way she could associate. Who has a needle who's going to stick her. I mean, if I'm walking down the street and a guy came up and stuck my daughter with a needle, would you say, hey, look, don't do anything? She might think the guy's violent? I, I mean, that's a little different situation. That's outside of the doctor's office. That's a totally different situation. It's still a strange you know I mean? dude sticking a needle in her. Uh, okay, look, I won't do that. How about this? How about uh, I'll just kind of open the door and just scream at him like, get out of here! Don't ever do that again! And then slam the door and he runs or, out scared. Or what if, after the shot, you give her a hug, you know, you're with the nurse, everyone's okay, that everyone's just How's fine. that good? Because should should I high five him and go, hey, you got my daughter good, good job, dude. And mm-hmm. she's like, oh, this makes no she's sense. She's only going to cry for just a few minutes. It's not going to be something that she's not going to be crying. But the memories well, last a lifetime. The memories last. She'll be scarred for crying. life. It'll help her to realize that everything will be okay. How about this? How about I open the door and I just flinch at the guy, you know, and he like runs out like so it's not even physical. And I'm just like, mm, and the guy runs out scared. And then I slam the door and I could be like, it's okay, baby. Daddy's protecting you. I just don't think that's a very good idea. She's going to be afraid of doctor's office her entire life if we do this. Well, how about this? How, how about before I even come down there, I call you guys, I put you on the radio and I do a phone prank. For what? To listen to your daughter screaming? No, no. This is Prospector. This is a Prospector prank call. You're on Rock 107 right now. It's not real. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, what does he not understand? We can't do this. <laughs> well, on some level, you got to admit, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see you at 3 o'clock. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, grab the kids, call your neighbors, and gather around the radio. It's now time to announce the winner of Prospector's Jam Bag of the Day, as decided by you at rock107.com. We uncover the most baffling, ridiculous, pathetic, cockeyed, laughable, preposterous blunders in the world of misdeeds. Nominee number one. It's a dirty job, but maybe students don't need to be the ones doing it. A principal and a teacher were arrested for endangering the safety of their students at their school. This happened after photos surfaced showing kids between the ages of 11 and 15 being forced to clean the school's septic system with their bare hands. Of course, this practice is illegal. Septic tank cleaning is best handled by professionals with the appropriate training and safety gear. You know, adults with tools, not students. Nominee number two. People still played Pokemon Go in 2022. The former mayor of Osceola Mills, PA, was sentenced to prison time after firing a gun at Pokemon Go players in 2022. Ida Reams, who was the former mayor, confronted Pokemon Go players at a local food bank. One of the players, called 911, said he and his friend were playing when Reams came out noticeably intoxicated and started yelling at them. Police listened to the 911 call and said that Reams audibly told the duo to get out right now and that she would blank ing kill them. Police said they also heard two gunshots and the call disconnected. Ida Reams was sentenced to up to one year in jail, plus 18 months probation and a plea deal. Reams was elected mayor of Osella Mills in 2013 and successfully won re-election in 2017. She stepped back when her second term ended in 2021. And the winner is... The drunk woman who shot at two people playing Pokemon Go. 
you're an idiot. You could have killed somebody, but you're the yam bag of the day. Keep it here for all the nominees for Prospector's Yam Bag of the Day, weekday mornings on Rock 107. On Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss Prospector's Prime Cuts.